for those of you who don't know, today is a very special day for ESCAP, that is the Economic and Social Commission for Asia and Pacific. 60 years young. A lot has been achieved in those 60 years, but of course, worlds change, economies change, and there's still a lot to be done. We thought we'd take the opportunity to talk to the Under Secretary General of the United Nations and the Executive Secretary of ESCAP, Dr. Nolene Hazer. Welcome back to the program. Thank you, Valerie. Quite a challenge or challenges you've had in the last little while, but now's the time to celebrate. Yes, it is a time to really celebrate because it's 60 years of ESCAP mm -hmm. and this is, is the 60 years of being a regional arm in the Asia-Pacific region and what a change we have had in the mm -hmm. Asia-Pacific region during this period. You know, we started um, because member states would like to have a platform, a regional platform that could bring countries together that, where they could have a regional voice, where they could share development solutions and build their, their nations and look, we do have shared prosperity. Mm -hmm. We do have uh, social progress. And of course, there are new challenges now uh, in the Asia Pacific region. Mm -hmm. So overall, we've come a long way, but obviously there are still more challenges. Today, with this economic crisis we have globally, it's said that uh, the areas that you're going to have to concentrate on in the foreseeable future, uh, mm -hmm. that is on food, on fuel, and on climate change. Yes, Valerie, because you see, we undertook a development journey uh, over the last uh, 60 years, and we have uh, actually achieved a lot in terms of even uh, addressing issues of poverty. But this is a region where we have economic powerhouses, mm. but we also have, unfortunately, some of the greatest divides. The disparities are huge. Particularly uh, the rich and the poor. I mean, absolutely. the poor are getting poorer, the rich are getting richer. Yes, and also the fact that this is home to about 600 million of the world's poor people mm. and some of the hungriest people. Many of the hot spots, uh, mm. if you do, do a, a, a hunger map, happens to be in the Asia Pacific region. Mm. Uh, so so uh, in a sense, um, we have to ensure that the development gains that we have made are not lost. Mm. Uh, They're not lost because we have not managed risks and uh, uh, a whole series of fallbacks and threats to uh, development mm. from a disaster to financial crisis to high rises in energy prices, food mm. prices, and so on. But also, uh, it's not that all countries are prosperous. I mean, you still mm. have the largest number of the least developed countries in the Asia-Pacific region. Mm. And one of the challenges of the United Nations is to ensure that the countries who have made it um, can actually use regional cooperation to assist uh, the less of the, of the least developed countries uh, in our region to achieve the Millennium Development Goals. And I also believe tomorrow you have a special panel discussion, the mm. 65th Commission meeting mm. on various areas. I think talking about sustainable, it's towards sustainable agricultural and food security in the region. Yes. What areas do you hope to cover within that? You know, uh, every year the member states, we have 53 mm -hmm. member states, uh, and they choose a particular theme that would be of concern to them, where they would like to have common understanding and take common action. Mm. And this year, it is on sustainable agriculture and food security. I think the whole issue is the fact that the financial crisis has mm. converted itself into an economic crisis, into a food crisis. Mm. Because the issue in the Asia-Pacific region is not just the availability of food, but the economic access to food. In other words, do you have sufficient income? Do you mm. have job security to buy the food? Mm. And, and, um, and also, how do we ensure food security, not just uh, in terms of the availability of food, but in terms of food security, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of safety of food, uh, in terms of making sure that we can generate and, and produce our food in a sustainable way uh, over the next generation. So the issue of sustainable agriculture, mm. the way we use our water, the way we use our land, the way uh, we, we develop uh, partnerships and the use of technologies, or all these would be discussed. Mm. Yeah. It's interesting because when I first read climate change, mm. I thought, why, why is this brought into the equation? Yes, the yeah. food and the fuel. Yeah. I understand climate change mm. is so important for Asia Pacific because as I understand it, I think it's 56% of the world's natural disasters occur mm. in this particular region, which has a mm. further impact mm. on 
food, on fuel, on whether mm -hmm. we can actually have sustainable, mm -hmm. you know, development or agricultural mm -hmm. products in this area. Mm -hmm. Is that an area that you also have to consider seriously? It is a very important area because um, if you, the, the point is that our climate is changing. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, it's, and unless we do something, it will affect our weather patterns. We have had severe storms, we have had severe droughts, be it the fires in Australia mm -hmm. or the cyclones in Myanmar. Uh, and uh, we, there will be uh, rising sea levels, changing uh, uh, movements of fish, uh, mm -hmm. how, where we grow our crops, uh, what happens to our water uh, supply, and so on. Mm -hmm. And therefore, uh, it is something that will affect our economies. Mm -hmm. It will affect human sustainability. And therefore, we need, um, as a region, to address what I call the three imbalances. Mm -hmm. The economic imbalances that we've spoken about, the social imbalances because of the disparities, mm -hmm. and increasingly the ecological imbalances. Mm. Not going to be an easy 60th anniversary for you, is it? Not. Uh, <laughs> it's a time to look backwards, but a time to, to look, look forward. forward. But I think it's a time where we can actually convert threats into opportunities and to seize this into a much mm -hmm. deeper reform agenda for the Asia Pacific and the member states are ready. And I think the other thing too is that to get the buy-in of people mm. who in fact are not perhaps so affected, but will actually understand the needs of others less fortunate. Absolutely. Mm. And I think the private sector has to come in, Def and to, as besides civil society. Mm. Thereby lies the challenge. Thereby <laughs> lies the challenge. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining mm -hmm. us, and a uh, very happy 60th anniversary to all at ESCAP, uh, whether you be in Thailand or around the whole region. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you, Valerie. Thank you. Thank you.